It all started when I was a kid and my dad introduced me to professional wrestling. He shared the stories of Killer Kowalski, Andre the Giant, Jimmy Superfly, Snuka, and all the greats. I immediately fell in love with it and grew into a huge wrestling fan by the time I was 12. There was no denying that I was a major wrestling fan. So much so that my dad would take me into Boston, me and a couple of my friends, to watch the live wrestling shows. The big treat was going up to the souvenir stand and getting a t-shirt. And my favorite t-shirt was my 316 t-shirt from Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin 316 says I just whipped your ass! At home I wore the shirt religiously, but one day I wore it to school. And that's when it all fell apart. I sat down in homeroom and was immediately made fun of by the kids that I thought were my friends. From that day forward, I never wore a wrestling shirt to school and I stopped watching completely. Now that I look back, what would my life be like if I never gave up wrestling? I mean, I was only a fan, but I had bigger goals. I eventually wanted to become a professional wrestler. I mean, would I be in wrestling school trying to make my way into a small promotion? It would have been worth it. So I guess as a 23-year-old master's student, I decided to go out and give it a shot. I mean, what did I have to lose? I slowly began working in the ring with them during one semester. But now as I look deeper into professional wrestling and see that the sport is marred with drug and alcohol abuse as well as illegal steroid use, is this the path I want to go down? Maybe I did make the best decision for myself when I was younger. What does it really take to make it? And are these guys crazy for trying? I mean, knowing exactly what it all entails? I guess I'll have to find out. What's up, man? Howdy. Do you want to slide him in the middle or you want to drive? No, he's hopping in back. Okay. I'll hop in back, Gus, if you drive. <laughs> you know how to drive stick, right? Actually, I don't. Good. You're going to learn. The guy driving with the hat on is Matias. Matias has been a pivotal member of Kick Axe Wrestling, or KAW, since its inception back in 2011. He wrestles as Il Zitro. You know, you can get a lot of enjoyment out of a lot of different things. I've got a lot of random hobbies. But nothing feels the same way that pro wrestling does. I, I figured out, you know, through family members really quickly that it was staged, and it didn't bother me. What did I do? At like five years old, I, I organized my, my first uh, uh, professional wrestling organization, if you will, in a sandbox where we had fake wrestling matches, and that got broken up real quickly by teachers. As a little kid, my family didn't have like cable or anything, so. Um, I had a lot of taped stuff. A lot of the stuff was taped before I was born. You know, it was Hulk Hogan coming back from, from being taken out by Earthquake. Ultimate Warrior match, watch the same Ravishing Rick Rude, Roddy Piper, Jimmy Superfly Snuka, watching those over and over. And it just got ingrained into me and I, I, I loved it. I, it was just such a, a spectacle. Sean, the guy with the glasses in the bed of the truck, is a freshman at NAU. He wrestles under the name Landon Lang. After wrestling in high school, he decided to begin his training for professional wrestling with KAW. Well, I went into high school looking for something to do to be more social. So I, I thought sports would be something good because people in sports are all, you know, pretty tight. So we're going to try out wrestling. And I remember I was bumped up to 220s against a rival. This guy comes out, he starts headbutting me. <laughs> I just remember hearing the crowd blaring. Both of our faces were cut up and bloody. And it was just crazy how much the crowd was just cheering and I loved that. It changed my life, like doing it. Um, the wrestling team was like my family. I mean, <sighs> I don't know, it was just, I'm so glad I did it. It's such a great experience. KAW practices in the shadows of the mountains of northern Arizona. Their backyard 18 foot by 18 foot wrestling ring is one of the more unique setups around. Sean and Matias are the only members who showed up to today's practice. The one on one instruction will be important for Sean. Yeah. 
what drives me to get good at any anything that I do. It's just that I like to be good at things. I have just that inner thing. Like I, I pick up something and I start to do it. And once I start, I'm like, well, I've started. I'm not gonna just drop it. And if I started it and I'm doing it, I might as well get good. Because what's the point in knowing how to do something if you're not gonna do it well? Well, I definitely look up to Matthias just because of his attitude. <laughs> I love his I love his attitude. I love how he how he looks on things, how he approaches things that a complicate whether we have a complication or something or uh, we're trying to teach someone or teaching me a new move. I just I have a lot of respect for Matthias and what he's he's done uh, for the club and for for teaching me. It's theoretically possible. I know the right people. If I found a way to get you to Japan to do a show, to participate. Holy shit, I would do that. <laughs> but you'd eventually like to see you like be in the main events and be in the big shows. That's that's a kind of a, a cool thing to be in. But do, do, you, do you agree with that? Oh, definitely. We were talking about what you would do. Oh, I yeah, yeah. I don't. We already kind of talked about this, and you said like you've already kind of decided it would be awesome to be like on the writing or creative team. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, but. Like, rewind to four years ago when you guys started KAW. Same thing. Same thing, you still wanted to be in creative? I or get you... insurance and I get paid better. Yeah. And I don't have to die. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to die. But was there ever a point where you were like, well, I'd, I'd like to be in the shows? Yeah, like when I was like 10, 12. I was so, like, yeah. So when was the switch? Uh, when I realized that, you know, there were other things involved in this and that, you know, I mean, I want to have a family, and I know what goes behind, on behind the scenes. You spend all your time on the road. You get addicted to painkillers. You can't sleep because you're constantly moving, you know, from place to place. So you got to take pills to go to sleep. Then you can't get up to get to the gym to get ready for your match. So you got to take pills to get up. And it's just a super, you know, downward spiral. Can I change my mind on my answer? <laughs> oh. You know, I love professional wrestling. I would love to do it, but realistically, what I can do with it is not going to help me in a financial way. So I started thinking, well, I love television. I love working with all this stuff. They need people to film. They need people to write. There is all this creative stuff that I can do and still be a part of the business. And certainly the time that I've spent in the ring, I don't think is going to hurt my chances of getting a creative, you know, job with WWE so I mean that's where it is for me uh, love the ring love performing love the love the crowds but the biggest thing is uh, you just have to be realistic about what's gonna happen to you where your paychecks coming from if I can be an actual employee of WWE that means more financial security that means more uh, you know insurance you know and that just means uh, a healthier Matthias when it's all said and done. After months of planning in and outside of the ring, Matias and the club will perform their first live show of the year at Mother Road Brewery. You know, ever since that last show in November, I've been itching to get in the ring and to do this myself. As the excitement grows for the event, one member is noticeably missing. Sean's got to do what he's got to do. Uh, you know, he's a student, when most everyone is, um, so when they've got stuff to do, then when class comes first, you know, so uh, we just do what we always do, we improvise. When I was younger, I'd gone to the bigger shows in the major arenas, but tonight's live show had a different energy about it.
Yes! 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 Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming and joining us this evening here at the Mother Road Brewery for KAW Bruising and Brew. How do you feel overall? Relieved. Relieved? And slightly in pain. If you want to know why we were doing it, it was because I was in there with those kids taking pictures. That's why I do it. Because it is freaking awesome to have those kids go, Zaytro! And to hold them to get the pictures, and then the dad came in and told me that I made their day. So, I mean, that's, that's what I did it for. Summing up the day, uh, coming in a nightmare and going out a dream. So, I'm happy. So I guess looking back at this semester and seeing all the work that I've done with the professional wrestling club, it did make me fall in love with the sport again. Maybe in the near future there's a place for me in the ring, but I think right now I'll stay on the outside.